Hi folks, today I'd like to take you through a brief tutorial on how to draw causal loop diagrams in VinSim PLE from Ventana Systems. Now, if you're interested in how to draw stock and flow diagrams and actually do system dynamics model simulations using VinSim, I have other videos on that, as well as some other tools like Insight Maker. But today I'm just focusing on causal loop diagrams. I'm going to be using VinSim PLE 911, which is a version of VinSim where they have started to introduce their new sketch tool, which is in beta as the default sketch tool for the program. So if you install VinSim PLE 911 or later, then you'll get this tool by default. If you've used older versions of VinSim, or if you've upgraded from older versions of VinSim, when you open VinSim, you might get a very different look across the top and down the sides and at the bottom here. But overall, things are roughly located in the same places, although their look is slightly different. And there's some other features that are a little bit nicer about the new sketch. However, a lot of my students have found that when they go into new sketch and do something as simple as drawing a variable, a lot of times on both Windows and Mac, the program will just crash. We can't tell why it crashes for some and not for others, but we do notice that in the new sketch, this beta sketch, it seems to crash a lot more often. If you're having that problem, you can revert to the old sketch by going to tools and then switch back to old sketch. On a Windows machine, that'll cause it to immediately switch to the old sketch. On a Mac machine, it'll give you a little dialogue that says you need to close VinSim and then reopen to get the old sketch, in which case you can go to VinSim, quit, then reopen VinSim, and you'll get the old sketch back. I will have a separate tutorial video showing you how to draw causal loop diagrams in the old sketch tool for those of you who um, are, are forced to use the old sketch tool or just have an older version of VinSim and want to see um, uh, how to use that tool in particular. But if you follow this tutorial, again, pretty much everything's located in the same spots in VinSims and the old sketch. They just kind of look a little bit different. So you might be okay just watching this one. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to do a simple fish population uh, model. Now, in order for us to draw causal loop diagrams, we're really going to focus on the variable tool here, which has an A there, which stands for aux. We're also going to then to draw our causal links using the arrow tool right here. And then we're going to do the loop annotations, positive loop, positive feedback loops, negative feedback loops using the comment tool, which is right here. Occasionally, we may need to delete things, so the delete tool will be useful right here bleed tool right here. Occasionally, we also might need to move and resize things. And this move resize tool is available here. This is also a great tool for selecting things. So you can make batch edits or copy and paste things out to reports like we'll see at the very end of this tutorial. All right, if I want to do a simple fish population model, you might imagine that I'm going to have three variables that are causally related. The number of fish available in a fishery, for example, the number of new fish per year, kind of a regeneration rate, and maybe the deaths per year, which uh, might be rated, related to say a food limitation per number of fish. So just keeping it simple with those three, let's go and add those three. So the first one here, I'll say number of fish. Now the default font that it picks here is of size, I think 12 points. That may be fine for you. When I'm projecting on a screen for my students, it's way too small. You can go in and change the font of each individual variable, or what's usually much more convenient is if you right click on the canvas, then you can access the default fonts for all the variables, the old ones you have in there that haven't been changed, as well as any new ones that you're going to add. And I can see the default font here is Times New Roman 12. So um, it, again, I get here by right clicking on a blank spot on the canvas. If you um, don't have a mouse, it allows you to right click. On a Mac, you can hold down control and left click, and that will bring that up. If you have a trackpad, um, a lot of times two finger clicking is the equivalent of right clicking. And so if you um, two finger click, then you can bring that up. Um, alternatively, if none of that's working for you, you can go up to the view menu and go way down to fonts and colors. And it'll bring that up, the view to the defaults. All right, so I'm gonna go into here and I wanna make that bigger than 12 to make it a little bit easier to see. So I'm gonna scroll down in this list here. 
select 24, or try to select 24. There we go, 24, hit okay, 24 here. And it made it 20, you know, bigger. Now, because I only provided a small amount of space for the auxiliary variable, for the variable, then it wrapped. You might be fine with that word wrapping. If you're not, you can grab this circle here. We're gonna call that a handle. You can grab that handle and you can resize the box so that it doesn't wrap as much. You can grab that handle when you're either in the variable mode or when you're in the move sketch mode. Either one allows you to do that. Okay, so I need to create my other two. So I had over here um, the new fish per year. And over here, maybe the deaths um, per year. Okay, so um, we know these things are causally related. So I'm going to go over to this link, this informational link here, the arrow tool here. And I'm going to say with the number of new fish, with fit new fish, I know that that's going to affect the new fish per year. So I went to the arrow tool. I clicked on the number of fish that anchored the end of the arrow there. I then um, I um, the, the arrowhead was floating. And so then I clicked on the uh, where I wanted the arrowhead to be. And then that anchored the arrowhead there. And I drew a straight line between the two of them. Now notice it put a handle in there. If I'm in the arrow tool, I can then mouse over the handle and the little arrow goes away when I do that. I can click on that and then drag it up or down to give it some mark. All right. And we're gonna talk about how to then um, annotate that next. And so I know, for example, that number of fish going to new fish per year, that is going to be a positive link. And that's because if I increase the number of fish available in the fishery, more fish will be having babies. So the new fish per year will also increase. So an increase on one end of the arrow causes an increase on the other end of the arrow. That uh, is a positive causal link, sometimes also called a same relationship because they move in the same way. So if I want to annotate that, I need to be able to add some annotations to this link. Well, how do I do that? Well, if I'm in the arrow tool, I can mouse over this handle and right click. Again, right click is key here. And that brings up a bunch of options I have for my arrow tool. And so I can select that I want this to be a plus, indicating a positive link, or if you like the convention better, an S for same. They're synonyms for each other. So I'm gonna do a plus. I can select here that I want the arrow to be placed next to the arrowhead, not the handle. So next to the arrowhead, so over here. And I want it to be on the outside of, the, of this here. If I put on the inside, it might be a little cramped. So I'm selecting outside here. Now, um, it may take time for the number of fish to generate new fish per year. So I'm going to maybe put a delay mark. So I'm gonna check this delay mark here and that's gonna put a little delay on this indicating that once you have more fish in the fishery, you don't immediately get more fish per year. Maybe it takes time for those fish to start reproducing. So there's gonna be a delay there. If I click on that, then um, maybe I'll click my move tool so I can move away there. I see now I've got my nice positive link with the delay mark there. So let's do that for the others. So new fish per year to number of fish. I just click new fish per year, then click number of fish using the arrow tool, grab the handle, pull it down. So then now um, I have to say, well, what type of link is this? Well, if I increased my new fish per year, I will then also increase the number of fish in the fishery. So that's another positive link. So I'm gonna go down to this little handle down here, the circle, right click on it, select positive, arrowhead outside, just like before. I'm not gonna select a delay this time because if I have new fish, I immediately have uh, more fish in the fishery. And there we go. So if I click away using the move tool, I can see I've got that. Now on the other side of it, on the kind of limitation side, click on the arrow, as I get more fish, then I have to say, well, what's gonna to happen to the deaths per year? Well, if I have more fish, then um, there's a bunch of reasons why I'm gonna have more deaths per year. I mean, just in general, every fish has some probability of dying, but um, if I wanted to be more detailed, I would might model food limitation as well. And so as you get more fish, then there's less food available per fish. And so with the number of fish, you're gonna get an increase in the deaths per year. So I imagine I probably have another um, positive link going off this way, but then with more deaths per year, 
um, I'm going to have a negative relationship where there's, if you get more deaths per year, you're going to eventually have um, fewer fish in the fishery. So I need to label this one as a positive up top. So I'm going to go to its handle, right click on it, say I want it to be a positive, put the positive there. But then down here, I'm going to right click on it and say I want it to be a negative. Now, if I just do that, I've got this negative here and this positive here. If I don't like, um, I might, you know, maybe make these a little shallower so they're a little farther apart. I might not like that this is colored blue. So one of the things I can do is I can just right click on that handle and then under the color here, this, if I click on the color, this minus is the default color for all links and that's blue. If I want it to be red, I can force it to be red by clicking the red there. Now, the minus sign down here, it's, if I click on its font, I see that that's the default color for text, which happens to also be blue. So if I want the minus to also be uh, red, I have to click there and select red. And so now I've got a red uh, link with a red link label. So now all I'm left with is have to have to mark the polarity of these two feedback loops. And so this loop on the left here is a positive feedback loop because it has an even or zero number of negative links. This loop on the right is a negative feedback loop because it has an odd number of negative links. So I'm going to go to the comment tool. And then I'm going to click in the middle here. And this one was the positive loop. And so um, there's a bunch of different ways that I can annotate this thing. The simplest thing I can do is to go down to image and select an image of a plus. So notice I did that under image plus. And then um, I can say around the plus, I want um, maybe some additional embellishments. This loop is going in the counterclockwise direction. So I'm going to say, I want to put a loop counter indicator around it. And if I wanted to, I can change the color of that loop counter um, to a different color. Um, by default for these loop annotations, it's black. So I might change it to a blue color. If I click okay there, then I get a plus with this blue um, annotation around it. If I don't like how tight things are, I can spread it out. Now, um, I might want to put a little annotation around here to tell the reader um, to name this loop. Like I might wanna name it the regeneration loop. So if I go back to my comment tool and I right click on the comment, it brings back up the comment editing tool here. And I can then type in my comment regeneration and it will add a comment onto this right um, with, um, right with uh, this image here. Now, this is a teachable moment. Um, Vincent just popped up an annoying thing saying, do you wanna save this? Um, I'm going to save this automatically so it doesn't bother us again. So, um, but that's what just happened there. So I go with through, I went into my comment tool, I can type regeneration here, and it's gonna put regeneration right um, in that loop. Now, if I don't do anything else, it actually puts the word right on top of the image in the center. That's not ideal. I'd like it to be up top here. So um, I can right click on that. And then under text position, I can say above. And maybe I don't want it to be 24 point. I can change it to 18 point. And then I get a nice regeneration above there. I can grab the handle, make the handle a little smaller, for example. And then I got that nice annotation. Now I could have done other things. Like I could have actually put two comments, um, one comment for uh, the little plus sign and another comment for the text labeling the loop uh, but this just allows me to do it in one in one location so i want to do the same thing over here so i'm going to click on this thing uh, for my comment i'll maybe say limitation i'll say above 18 the um, i will do a loop in this case the loop i believe is going clockwise so maybe i'll change the color of the loop to be red because it's a negative loop. And then I will change the image to be this minus sign. And there I've got my clockwise ones, which I can drag around. I can resize if I want and so on. So now I've got my 
uh, causal loop diagram completely drawn. So um, if the, the last thing I might want to do is actually export this somewhere where I could use it in a report or a write-up. And so um, I can highlight these things by going to the move tool. And then I can drag a box just by left clicking and holding and dragging it around. And it will then um, select a portion of my canvas here. And then I can go up and copy this. Now you might want to do a screen capture. That's another thing you could possibly do. The downside of screen captures is maybe the backgrounds aren't going to quite match the way you want to look. If you zoom in on the screen capture, it might get kind of pixelated. So doing it this way with the move tool guarantees that wherever you paste it, you'll be able to zoom in and out and you'll be, and it's, it's what's called a vector format, um, which allows it to kind of infinitely zoom and always stay clear. So I highlight all of these things and I can either hit the copy tool here or I can go to edit copy or use the shortcut for copy. Then if I go into an application like Microsoft Word, which is right here, I can go up to edit and then paste and there it is. And so then I can resize that. Everything looks pretty clean and I resize it because it's a vector format. I can then resize it if I don't want it to be that, uh, uh, that, that large and so on. So just trying to make it a little smaller again without flipping it up. Let's try to make that a little bit better. There we go. All right, so that's how I can get that into a document. Now you might look at that and you say, well, um, what if I wanted to change all those blue links to a different color? Like, I just don't like blue. Um, I think it'd be better as a different color. Now I could go in and manually change all those colors. The other cool thing that I can do in new sketch, and I couldn't quite do it in this way in old sketch, is that I can click on one of those, I can go into the move size tool. I can click on the handle for one of those links. Then I can hold down the shift key. So I'm holding down shift right now on my keyboard. And I can click on one of the other links and one of the other links. So I clicked on those three links. If I go down here, it's got all of these, um, these options down here. Some of them are related to text and some are related to color. And so if I go over here on this color one, I, it brings up a little color picker and I can, uh, I can pick a color or I can manually specify a color that I want. And after I do that, close this out, click away, then I can see that it changed uh, all of the three link colors and all of their labels to the color that I wanted right there. So it was a quick way to batch edit those colors. And so um, I could select um, other things like these auxiliary variables, and then notice that text options come up. And so now I can manually change their sizes and it'll change them just for those variables. It didn't change them uh, for these other two. Now under the edit menu, you can also do things like select all, or you can say select, and then it has a bunch of um, options here where I can select only the information arrows and it selects all the links. Or I can say edit um, select um, only the aux const data, which is just these three variables. And then whenever something's selected, then you have options to, to uh, change things about them down the pop up down here. All right, so that's how you use new sketch to draw a causal loop diagram. Uh, like I said, I've got other videos available for the stock and flow diagrams. And I'm also going to make another video that matches this one almost exactly for old sketch, um, which is commonly something you need to do if new sketch is crashing around you a lot, or if you just happen to be using an older version of it. So I hope that's helpful. Happy modeling.